Hello, welcome back to another video, Talking Kiki Sir. Today's video is about Ant-Man and Wasp, Quantum Mania, my thoughts. Before that, let's, uh, let me put up the spoiler alert. So, spoiler alerts, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, people, spoiler alerts. And here we go. Play the trailer in the behind while I talk over, talk about this movie. Just got back, I want to say just uh, about three hours ago. Had a bit of a lunch before I came home. It gave me some time to think about this movie and what well, my thoughts. Um, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> just like the other Ant-Man movies. This is, I think in my opinion, is the worst one. That's not to say the movie was bad. Uh, this one's actually, I had a bit of fun watching it. It wasn't like amazing or anything out of this world. Uh, it's what Marvel says is the start of the fifth, fifth, uh, fifth phase, phase five. I'm pretty glad that Phase 4 is over because Phase 4 was, in my opinion, the worst one. None of the films was good. Um, with the exception of Spider-Man, but would you really put that in, in the actual MCU phase? Or maybe a part-timer, you know, because it's more of a Sony, a Sony thing. I would say Doctor Strange probably the best one in Phase 4, but even then that was uh, average at best, you know. So this film, uh, I mentioned them uh, with average hopes because of um, Ant-Man. The first one was one of those surprise, I quite was surprised that I liked it. The second one, in my opinion, is the best one so far. This one, like I said, is a bit, it's definitely the worst one. That's not to say it's a bad movie. It had these bad bits, of course, I would say. Um, there's a few things that I would definitely that I was like, uh, but I was, I think the surprise of Ant-Man, the first two movies were because of Scott Lang's uh, character. You know, even in the first movie, you, you kind of see him stealing things, regular, a regular guy, you know, not the best looking, not the best shape, not a fighter, you know, he has his wits and, um, and he had his friends, which I kind of miss in this one. I miss, um, I miss, or he's kind of, uh, what do you call it? His crew, like Michael Pena and uh, the other, the other, the other characters. They were kind of funny characters, and I felt that missing them, I kind of felt where were they? You know, looking forward to seeing them. Like I said, uh, uh, um, with Phase Four being what it is, I kind of lost interest in a lot of the Marvel stuff. So I haven't keep kept up to date with much of um, what's going on. I've not even seen the trailer until like just now when i put this video together literally that's how much i really i don't want to, i don't want to use the word i don't care you know but i don't care in a certain way i mean after phase four and what marvel and disney doing with the with their products you know that the, the message and the identity politics they are putting and pushing forward it's kind of almost put me off a lot of this stuff but i still went and watched it because um i felt that like I said, the first two was pretty fun to watch. I like the actors. Uh, great to see Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer. Always good to see them. And it's one of those small movies. I thought in my mind that um, there won't be that many identity, gender pushing politics in this film. And yeah, you know, there wasn't that many. So it's not as bad as some of the previous movies in the last couple of years when they're pushing all that kind of crap around. You know, this is more of a subtle. Subtle kind of film. Yeah, back to my point was what made the first two movies that I really enjoyed. You can actually relate to Scott's, Scott's character, the working class, the blue collar man who trying to make make ends meet, a single single parent, you know, trying to look good for his daughter, his wife or his ex wife was looking down on him, and so on. And you know, he somehow just coincidentally got these powers from Hank Pym, Michael Douglas, to help him do something. And then they bonded and they, you know, they both kind of work together and they both change each other's life for the better. You know, mutual respect, which you kind of relate to, like, you know, it happens to us in our lifetime. Sometimes we just meet the right person with the right um, experiences, the right, just the right timing and you do something, it does change your life. So you kind of relate to that. It's not like I said, masculine and good looking like Chris Helmworth and so or, or, you know what I'm talking about, just a regular guy. 
with regular problems. Yeah, and and I think that was missing in this one. Uh, we know that at the start of the film, he, he, he's almost like a little celebrity, you know, because he helps save the world in Endgame. He's just written a book, and he's gone to book signings, and he's got a teenage kid, he's quite rebellious and so on. And it, it seems like, I think he's married to um, Hope, Evangeline's character, because Cassie called Michael Douglas grandpa, so yeah, I assume they are married, and so on. So, and going back to what my point was, to re uh, how I relate to him, because he was a regular working guy. So happened to, because they run into Hank Pym, they did something, they, they helped each other out, become a hero, and, you know, he helped Captain America in Civil War, and then in Endgame, so everything seemed to be just coincident that he'd become a hero and join the fight and help save the world. I think this one missed that where Cassie goes and he was part of Avengers, you should, you should be saving things. I felt that this film was too big for him or the concept was too big for him. Because in the quantum realm, it's almost a big universe within the universe and become the savior of this vast um, you know, universe of millions and millions of kind of creatures living in there. I felt that was, I don't know, maybe just for Ant-Man's characters a bit too big for him, I just wanted him to do kind of like small things, you know, it's like the first, the first two movies, because this movie felt really kind of out of place, the first two was a nice subtle moving together, almost like, two was a bigger film of course, and you can see it was a bigger film, but only by a little, this one just felt like it's outclassed, because, and then you've got, you know, Kang the Conqueror, who's a really powerful villain, even in the comics, you know, he, his trouble, his troublesome, even Avengers and Fantastic Four, X Men, all the big teams are kind of kind of scared of him. They don't want to want to get involved with Kang the Conqueror in the comics. That he's pretty tough. And now you're fighting Ant Man, Wasp, Cassie. They're just regular humans, and yeah, they have special powers in their suits, but they shouldn't really hold too much of a threat. I don't know, and then and then you had the, the, the CGI, which this room had a lot of CGI because 90%, 95% was set in the quantum realm. And yeah, I thought the design was pretty cool. You know, you had a lot of Star Wars influence, maybe a John Carter in there, though. Well, he's the hero of Mars. Uh, Hank becomes, not Hank, uh, Scott Lang becomes uh, the hero of the day. Uh, and, uh, what do you call it? Didn't mean to be, it just so happened because he wanted to get out of the realm, he had to save his family, and while doing so, he had to defeat Kang, and they did it. So, to cut long story short, this film was also, you had a nice little um, appearance from Bill Murray, and that's probably my favorite scene. I think you know, Bill Murray's always a big fan of his, always great to see him. I think he probably ad lib, you know, I don't think that was written in the script, that was pretty fun. Also, Moldock is in it, you know, um, played by, uh, what's his name, the one, the villain from the first movie. And I don't know about the CG, but this still feels like they just stretched his face. So <laughs> I don't know, he just, I don't know if it's meant to be goofy, but it does look pretty bad. But there are no, some CG fights, some CG was pretty, pretty, pretty good in it. Somewhat, you know, average, I suppose. But overall, I just felt this was very, kind of too big for Ant Man. It felt like a whole different movie, you know, if you can if you watch all three movies there back to back and this one just stands stands out like a sore thumb, you know. I just felt it was a bit too big and I thought it was Kang was great, uh, the actor, Jonathan did a really good job. Uh, I know he's gonna be a lot more movies. I think he's gonna be like the main main villain in phase five and you know um, I really look I'm looking forward to what he does. But I just felt like I felt that's a wrong villain for Ant Man because I don't know, just like they're not like if you look at the end game, you had four Iron Man and Captain America right, fighting um, Thanos, and they got their ass kicked in by Thanos, and I don't know, and then you got. Ant Man, Wasp, and Cassie. I mean, Captain America he, on his own should be able to beat those three, right? 
and now you've got this villain twin to be really tough and they kind of you know okay if they didn't win if he's if, if they would have carried on Kang would have um still won but out of necessity but they, they caused enough trouble for Kang to lose the battle and I felt that undermined Kang the Conqueror as a villain because I'm thinking well he kind of got bested by those three right but at the same time if they would have used Kang to the full power he would have wiped Ant-Man and the Wasp and Cassie in seconds so I felt that was mismatched in my opinion um, so overall, uh, it was some fun bits, some of the jokes didn't land. Um, I didn't like the way that Modoc sacrificed himself and the way that the reaction, you know, it was more of a joke when he sacrificed himself. I didn't really like that. It was a five out of five out of ten for me this film. Five out of ten. It's the worst one. Um, I don't know. Let's we'll see what happens in the next film, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Like I said, I've kind of gone off uh, Marvel a lot, especially after Phase 4, with all that kind of agenda pushing, whatever nonsense I want to talk about. So, but I'm glad this one doesn't have, have too much of that. You know, it's just pretty straightforward adventure film, but I just felt that Ant Man, the character was, I don't know, I felt it was in a different movie. <laughs> it wasn't an Ant-Man movie, it just so happened to be a different movie We just had Ant-Man as a guest appearance, I don't know, just maybe just me thinking Anyway, let me know what you think about this movie, did you like it? Did you think it's okay? Are you happy? To, you looking forward to seeing MCU Phase 5? Anyway, I'd like to say uh, thank you for watching and please do subscribe and to, to the next video And good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you're on the world and please stay safe until next time, goodbye.